for Sports. A production of Cook Cable Vision of Syracuse presents Syracuse University Soccer. From the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, it's the Boston College Eagles and the Syracuse University Orangemen. Hi everyone, Jim Gilcrest along with John Karen Filoski and this is a contrast of two teams. The Syracuse University Orangemen have won five in a row while the Boston College Eagles are trying to get on track. John, Syracuse with the five big wins after the loss to Lafayette. They've been playing Super Bowl, what can I say? The team has come really come into his own. They lost 4-1 in the opening game against Lafayette, but five straight wins, which include a 1-0 victory Friday night over Big East rival uh, University of Connecticut. And they've been getting it done with the underclassmen. They have, to my surprise, first of all. Steve Morris has really come into his own. Five goals and two assists in just six games. Raymond Bruce, a sophomore co-captain, has been a sweeper back. He shows a lot of poise and a lot of confidence. And what I think is an outstanding freshman from Trinidad, Kona Hislop, by the time he's a senior, he'll be a great one. And if they get to the net, they've got to contend with a senior goaltender in Chris Whitcomb. He's a good one. He certainly is. Chris really came into his own about three years ago. There was a lot of controversy as to who was going to be the starting goalkeeper or who would replace a Joe Papaleo or a Rick Thatcher. But he's done a super job in the past three years. And as I said, on the other side of the coin, we have the Boston College Eagles who are trying to get above 500 but have not yet won in the Big East. They're 0-1. And that loss came to University of Connecticut 2-1 to one earlier in the week. It's still a young season for Boston College. I think it's going to be a season of transition. They've got a new head coach from Seton Hall. I'm sure he's going to turn that program around. Let's talk a little bit about Ed Kelly. Wherever he goes, success seems to follow. Absolutely. Ed Kelly, originally from Dublin, Ireland, took the Seton Hall program out of obscurity of, of a few years ago. The past two years, NCAA bursts in each two years. Exceptional team and exceptional coach. There you have it, Big East, and, Big East Conference Soccer, Syracuse University and Boston College from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse is coming right up. Today's game is brought to you by Coors, the original draft in Coors Light, the silver bullet. By Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. By ADP, the way America gets paid. And by Drumlins for golf, tennis, swimming, banquets, and all your travel needs, Drumlins. It's the right shot at the right time. For the top score is the bottom line. It's a new game. It's another round. The silver bullet won't slow you down. So come on, it's a cool life. It's the right beer now. Drumlins, you're just a short drive away from a full-serve facility. Whether you're just learning the game or perfecting it, our professionals make it a truly pleasurable experience under beautiful conditions. Members can enjoy the spacious new Drumlins Members Lounge, and there's the public restaurant open to everybody. For your next party, consider Drumlins Banquets. And when you've got travel in your plans, it's Drumlins full-service travel agency right at your fingertips. Drumlins, so much more than meets the eye. I admit it. I was impressed. And you thought this was going to be a waste of your time. That ADP speaker got me thinking. By turning over my payroll to someone who's faster, more accurate, and less expensive... You'd be freeing up your key people to do what you hired them to do. Produce. Well, what about a company my size? We're your size. It doesn't matter. Ten or 10,000 employees. ADP handles them all. Sounds like you work for ADP. It comes from experience. I've been using them for years. Success. It's not your success that concerns me. Mine. You're in early. How was the seminar? Impressive. Very impressive. How so? I've made a decision that will affect both of you. Sounds serious. Listen, we're in business to make a product, right? Right. That's what we do best, right? Mm -hmm. So I brought in ADP to do our payroll so that you two can be more productive. Makes sense. It's a sound business decision. Make one phone call to find out how your company can be more productive. ADP, the way America gets paid. That's it. It's over. We have nothing in common. I never agreed on one thing. Ever. Uh, Great. I need to find someone. More like me. When you find something you have so much in common with, something so exciting, so refreshing. Hi. Hi. You just can't stop yourself from grabbing it and holding on to it forever. 
For the great taste of Pepsi without caffeine, try caffeine-free Pepsi. Back with you at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. The Syracuse University Orange Men trying to win their sixth in a row after dropping their first game of the season against Lafayette. Uh, how tough a game was that for the Orange Men? You know, I, th I think Lafayette probably came into the game and surprised the Orange Men just simply because they don't have that big of a soccer program. But you really, you really have to give the Orange an awful lot of credit after a disappointing 4-1 to one loss we have a good shot of Tim Hankinson, the Syracuse head coach, in a few short years. He's done, he's done a great job. Mm -hmm. Boston College Eagles will be in their traveling maroon and gold, moving from right to left as you look at them. And as we mentioned, Syracuse coming off the one nothing win against the University of Connecticut right here in the Carrier Dome. Both these teams play on artificial surface. Does that matter one way or the other? You know, I don't think it really does, but the, the surface here in the carry dome tends to be a little bit softer than most of the artificial turfs that you'll find around in a, in a lot of the other parks. So we're underway from the carrier dome, Boston College with it. How does Syracuse uh, like to come out uh, at, at the opening uh, gun? I think they just want to really just knock the ball around, let as many players get a touch for the ball, and just keep possession. The other team can't score if, if you're keeping possession of the ball. They're probably going to try to get as many players touching the ball just to get into the game. You see the confines here in Syracuse. Uh, the out-of-bounds line goes right up to the, to the stands. Number seven is Steve Morris. He's the big shooter for the Orangemen. Off to a great start with five goals and two assists. The sophomore leads the Orange to scoring with 12 points. He's the guy. He's the guy. Chris Wright had an opportunity there, but he was thwarted, and back they come the other way. In the UConn game that Syracuse played, they were basically up and down. It was. It was, it was pretty much off to the races. Kona Hislop tried to get in the box that time, and he was defended well by number 14, Kevin Reed, and so it'll be a corner kick for the Orangemen. Kevin Reed did a good job getting to the ball, and this is a very good opportunity for the Orangemen, a corner kick. If they can get some A quality shot or a good opportunity on goal, uh, this early in the game could be very important. Keep an eye in the middle, number 22, Lee Davison goes up for the header, but he can't get it, and it comes back outside. Number two of the ball is Raymond Bruce. Header into the box. There's a shot on goal over the goal and into the stance. A very dangerous play by the Boston College Eagle defense, just letting the ball bounce into the 18-yard box, and everybody's just looking around. I've got it. You've got it. Fortunately for the, for the Eagles, number seven, Steve Morris, just kicked the ball over the goal. Golden opportunity comes and goes for the Orangemen, so BC comes back the other way. 42-50 to go in the first half of this Big East affair. Where does Boston College fit into the standings in the scheme of things as far as uh, soccer in this conference? Hey, Ralph. They would fit in either number three or number four, Jim, along with, the, along with the Provident College, UConn, and Syracuse. It is a transition year for the Eagles. They had a disastrous 1987, only four wins. Ed Kelly, the former Seton Hall coach, I'm sure we'll turn this program program around in a couple of years. So get a couple of the Irish players as he did over while he was at Seton Hall. And Seton Hall's gone to, gone to the NCAA tournament a couple of different times since he's been there. So like we mentioned at the outset, where Ed Kelly goes, success seems to follow. He hopes that holds true for the next few years to come anyway. I'm sure he does, and hopefully he doesn't start here today. Over here, Kev, Kev. Go near, go near, Kev. Now it looks like BC will have a direct kick. Talk a little bit about the wall that the Orangemen will form here. Well, Chris Wickham, the goalie for the Orange, will set up a wall basically to protect one part of the goal, and he'll protect the other part instead of trying to cover the whole net. There you see it, but uh, they don't go through the wall. Looks like a hand there, but they get away with it, and the Orangemen come back the other way. Now Wickham will take it in the box. He'll set things up for the Orangemen. Just underway at the Carrier Dome, Syracuse and Boston College in Big East Soccer. Hislop has the ball on the far wing. He'll try to make a move. 
He got does. Great burst of speed. And the ball goes out of bounds. There was a nice move that time to the end line, trying to beat his man, and he did. A very nice move. Got by the defender with a quick burst of speed. Got to the end line, crossed the well. Unfortunately for the Orange, nobody was running to the near post. Everybody's going to the deeper side. This slips a 5'10 freshman. Here's another corner for the Orangemen. Into the box. Header still in front. Cleared away by Boston College. Orangemen putting on early pressure. There's another nice move. Down goes an Orangemen. Play on, says the referee. A very con controversial. I was looking at Coach Hankins, and he had his hands up on that play. He thought Ralph Pascarella got taken down into the box. Well, for what it's worth, the nice, a nice defensive job by Jeff Monis on that play. That certainly was. Mark Wyndham in goal for the Boston College Eagles today. Or check that, that's Matt Renola in goal. He's a sophomore out of Guilford, Connecticut. Jim, the Orange, are doing, I'm sorry, the Orange are doing a super job controlling the ball. Unlucky there for Mark Fish. Just rolled a little bit too fast in front of him. Early possession for the Orange men, and they haven't been able to get a goal, but it's paying off anyway. They've had a couple of very close opportunities that if they keep that up, this would just a little bit too hard of a pass from Steve Morris to Kona Hislop. If he would have caught onto it, he would have been in by himself. So back they come the other way, Boston College. Number eight is Andy Sage. Into the middle to Greg Schwake, we have a whistle. And incidentally, Andy Sage is from Dublin, Ireland. But he was here before Coach Kelly got to the Boston College University, or Boston College, so we'll have to see if uh, a couple other Irishmen end up on the squad later on. But he I'm was sure. here before Ed <laughs> Kelly got here. I'm sure in a couple years from now, you'll see probably five, six of the starters will be uh, from Ireland. Chris Whitcomb on the clear now. And the Orangemen start back up. Aaron pass. They're trying to get uh, Hislop a, a break, it looks like, on, it, on every opportunity on that left wing. They're trying to isolate him against Kevin Reed over on the far right side uh, with the quickness and the speed that Kona has. That's exactly what you'd want to do if you're a striker. Get isolated on a one-on-one -on -one situation. We'll see how that develops as the match goes on. Talk a little bit uh, for me, if you would, about the defense in the middle of the field when players are just trying to get uh, possession of the ball. It's probably the most crucial area uh, as far as the whole soccer field is concerned is who's going to win that midfield. You always want to be as tight as you possibly can on your on your man and not let him turn and face your goal. So whoever wins the battle of the midfield, Jimmy, usually tends to uh, tend to get better possession of the ball, more opportunities, and then win the game. Keep an eye on Steve Morris. We'll call his name. There's an Aaron pass, though, and given right back up by Boston College, number 10, David Sullivan. The linesman caught Scott Morrell off sides way over here on the far left side. And Scott Morrell, a transfer from Syracuse University. This is a good homecoming for Scott. I'm sure he's probably very excited to be back here uh, as a BC Eagle at this time. Ball goes out of bounds, but the Orangemen will have it. Kevin Johnston is number 16. Mark Fish, a sophomore out of Fairport, New York, in western New York throws it in. Eagles take it away and back they come the other way. Chris Pace. Jeff Monis on the back line. He's got a lot of room. Down goes an eagle. Play continues. A soft pass by Jeff Monis got his own man into trouble. Boston College trying to uh, thread their way through the Syracuse defense at the midfield strike. Defensively, the Orange have done a good job until these past couple of passes. Moving towards the box now. Shot into the middle and cleared by the Orange. Boston College continues with the pressure. Here's a shot towards the net. Whitcomb will go up for it. It was wide anyway. 
but he controls the ball and the Orangemen will have it. That was an easy shot for Chris to handle, plus it was also uh, off target. But the past minute or so, Boston College did a very good job possessing the ball, moved it up nicely. When you hold possession of the ball like that, you're always going to find a few open men and a good opportunity at the end. So if it's an easy goal, uh, uh, safe for the goaltender, why take a shot like that? Well, I, I don't think number six Chris Pace intended to be an easy shot. He just didn't get uh, a good foot on it. Here's a good opportunity for Scott Morrell. There's a shot into the box, but it's cleared out by the Orangemen towards the end line, and it goes out of bounds. Ken Lane made a great run all the way from the back. BC's first first opportunity. They do a short corner kick where they're going to try to unbalance the orange defense. And they get it inside. It was centered but cleared by the orangeman and Morris has it. Like to watch this kid work. He's a great player. He's only a sophomore. Johnson with the ball now. Tries to go by the BC defender, but can't do it. Number 10 is David Sullivan, taken away by Islip. A lot of middle of the field playing all of a sudden after Syracuse put out early pressure. BC's done a good job getting themselves back into this game and into the midfield. Sullivan tried to lead Morrell that time, but he was thwarted, but Boston College still controls. To the corner for Chris Lagasse. He centers it. That was a nice move by Chris to get by Kevin Johnston. Sullivan overran the ball, but regains possession. Sends it into the box. Boston College heads it forward. Forward more. Whitcomb goes up and gets it. Nice play by Chris. Went up, for the, went up with the ball. Very strong with a lot of confidence. 11 minutes played. No score. BC and Syracuse from the Carrier Dome. And that one will go out of bounds. So Syracuse had the early pressure, but Boston College has got three shots on goal. That's right. You can possess the ball if you want for 89 out of the 90 minutes, but if you're not taking any shots on goal, you're not going to get any. You're not going to score, and you're not going to win the game. And there's also got, that got, you never know how the goalie is feeling that day, if he's concentrating or if he's uh, looking in some other direction. Quickly, quickly, come on. There's Reed against Hislop again. Behind, 18. Jim. The man who's going to take the, ball, the throw in right now, Ralph Pasquarella, has got a very strong throw in. This is even a better than a corner kick because you can direct it straight to somebody. It's going to be interesting to see if the Orange can get uh, something off of this. He's a little guy, 5'7 on the ocean side. Pasquarella with the ball in. Head, score. You wrote it. Kona has slipped from Ralph Pasquarella, skimmed right off of Kevin Johnston's head. He should be the coach. <laughs> that was a great throw in. I said that I said it's more dangerous than a corner kick simply because you can direct it. Here's the replay. A great throw in. Ralph Pascrell, the smallest player on the field. That was a great flick by Kevin Johnston. And Kona has finished it very well. And that's his fourth goal of the season. The assist to number three, Ralph Pascarella. And the freshman is on a roll. Goal by Hislop, assist from Pascarella and Johnston. So it's 1-0 Syracuse, and we've played just about 12 minutes. That's a great way for the Orange to get under track here. This could be dangerous. Whitcomb sl slides out to uh, to get it. A little bit of miscommunication between Raymond Bruce and, and Chris Whitcomb. By getting back to that throw in, Ralph Pasquarello, the smallest player on the field, threw that ball about 30 yards, directed it straight to an orange man's head, and the flick was there. It was a picture perfect goal. You can't write it any better. Throw in for Syracuse. That's Manus with the ball. Back to his goalkeeper, Vanola. There's a dangerous play right there, trying to go one on one near the box. Ken Elaine taking taking on an Orangeman as a defender, which is exactly what you don't want to do because you're just too close to the goal. 
And now you got a corner kick over here. It's too bad it's not another throw in. That was a short corner. Morris with the ball. Works towards the middle. Nice save. That was a good play by the Orange, and Matt Ranola came out very nicely. That was a dangerous, dangerous play. Chris Wright just missed the ball. And there's a clear. What does that do for a team? It just basically takes the pressure off the defense and lets everybody push up, and it relieves a lot, a lot of the pressures off the goalie. Is he just trying to send it into the middle of the field, or is he going for somebody in particular? You know, it's very hard, even if you direct the ball to somebody, kicking the ball 30, 40, even 50 yards like that to direct it to one player. Uh, basically, you're just trying to get the ball out of out of the, your zone uh, and, and get the attack underway again. And Wickham will have it. We've seen a lot of action in just uh, 15 minutes. There has been. Orangeman with the ball now. Whitcomb tries the other side. Mark Fish is number 12. He can't get it out. Orangeman have it again. That was a good defensive play by Nino Gallich. Fortunately for the Orange, that time, Jimmy, BC just couldn't control the ball. Chris Wright working on the other side now. And that goes uh, out of bounds. And here comes your man again. Well, the players with a long throw. There's a shot on goal. Nice save. Punch back out. That was a driller. Great shot by Lee Davison on that one. Matt Ranola tried to catch it. Another save that time. Here's a, here's a, we're going to see the replay of that last save by Matt. It was a great shot by Lee Davison. Struck the ball very well. Straight on target. That was hard shot right there. Punched away. Good save. Nice shot and a nice save. He's had a lot of work, this man. He certainly has. We've only played 16 minutes. one nothing is the score. Syracuse is on top. That goes out of bounds. And Boston College will get it. Toward the near side they come. And the ball goes out of bounds. Belongs to the orange man. Great ball by Steve Moore sending in Nino Gallich. He should go straight to the goal and take the defender on. Here's Hislop. But Ken, Ken Elaine, who uh, gave up that ball, got it back. He's been all over the field. He's the left back. He's been striker, right back. He's been all over. But he's quick, so I guess he can get away with it. Gallus looking for the return that time, didn't get it. Number eight is Andy Sage. Sullivan with it now. It's a good opportunity. Morell on the left wing. Into the box. But the cutter wasn't there that time. And Syracuse takes over. Uh, number six, Chris Pace, cut his run a little bit short. And Ralph Pasquarello did a nice job just knocking it back to Chris Wickham with his chest. No danger at all in that play. There's a good look at the senior from Orleans, Massachusetts. Stands 6-2. Been a starter for three seasons now. He's, he's really done a super job. Came into this program. He's worked very hard Bring on the offseason to build himself Bring up. Back. He's a great goalie. Ruffery signaling for Syracuse to throw it in. I think well, the referee's gonna give him a, a direct kick. There was a foul on one of the BC Eagles. Raymond Bruce gonna take the kick. Sends it in the box. His slips open. There's a shot. Broken up by Monis, but uh, Hislop had a shot to get a header. He had a 
no man in front of him. He did. I think he just mistimed his jump. He jumped a little bit too soon, and as the ball was the ball was coming down, he was almost back uh, back on his feet. But Kevin Johnston had a great opportunity. Here's a corner now into the box, cleared. That actually went uh, through Renola's hands, but BC escapes. Jim, whether it was that first goal by BC or maybe Lee Davidson's shot that shook Matt up a little bit, he does look a little bit shaky. And if you're an Orangeman right now, whenever you get the ball, get a shot and make sure it's on target. This slip working again. Stu Talmadge wears number 18. Up until now, it's been Reed against Hislop. Galich sends one on goal. But it's picked up by Matt Renola. I'm sure he'll take it. Maybe, maybe Nino was just thinking ex exactly what we were just talking about, that he does look a little bit shaky. I'm telling you, you ought to be the coach here. Okay. Right in script. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whistle and a stoppage in play. I guess they're going to give this to Boston College on a direct kick. We'll see what happened here. Ralph was just... Just holding the BC player. And a little bit of extracurricular activity there at the end. As Greg Schrake swung his arm. That was a smart that was a smart foul by Ralph. Saw that he was beat by the man. Delay the whole game. Into the box and nicely done by Syracuse to get the ball to Whitcomb. Very nicely done, but it's a dangerous play. If you're a defender, you're trapping the ball in your own 18-yard box. If you just miss kick it just a little bit, it's an immediate opportunity for the other team. You just want to do, as we as we always said when I when I was playing, if you went in doubt, kick it out. Out of bounds, and uh, Syracuse will have it. Pascarella M throws it in, but uh, we have another whistle. Here you see a good look at uh, Tim Hankinson. He's got to be happy with the way the Orange have played so far, not only this game, but so far this year. They're off to a great start, ranked 16th nationally before Friday's games. So a win here could maybe move Syracuse up in the standings a little bit. 16th nationally before this weekend's games against Connecticut and Boston College, winning both of these games. And I'm sure they could move up into the top 15, at least, depending on what the other schools have done. And in the middle of the field we go. Lee Davison to Morris. Morris now working. Chris Pays trying to keep up with him, but that's tough to do. It's a tough assignment. Yeah, Steve was just stuck there. Nobody was moving for him. Everybody just running away instead of running to him. schwake has got some room on the right side now. He'll send it in, in the middle. It goes through the box to the left wing. Sullivan has it. He tries to make a move toward the end line. Boston College still with the ball. There's another one. There's a header that goes out of bounds. That was a great cross by number eight, Andy Sage. Chris Wickham misjudged that ball a little bit, wasn't able to catch it. Go right away, call number, call number. Tough defense for uh, Fish, though. He had uh, he had something to do to get it out of there and couldn't do it. Certainly, you really can't do anything when you're running backwards trying to. That one goes off the football goal post. So an errant kick that time by Boston College, and Syracuse gets it back. There, that's a corner kick that's a viable opportunity Absolutely. to score a goal. That's, and that's too bad that it was. And that's too bad that uh, that it was kicked into the, into the football goal, goal post because corner kicks are a great opportunity. And you saw that microphone uh, on the goal post right there. <laughs> You heard the clunk up close and personal that time. And the, the ball didn't go across the uh, goalpost for the three points. So. The, the mic couldn't even help it. That's right. Winola clears. Boston College with it now. 22 minutes to go in the first half. one nothing Syracuse leading from the Carrier Dome. Jim Gilchrist along with John Karen Filoski. You're watching on Super Sports. And BC comes back the other way. Stay man, Kev. Number 18 is Steve Talmadge. Chris Pace with the ball. Back to the defense. 
They'll try the other side. Greg Schwake with the ball. Oh, well, that's uh, Jeff Modest now. Fine, Mark. Not too fast, Chris. To the right wing. Nice move that time between the legs. BC's doing a good job just holding the ball, possessing it, moving it up methodically. Thistle tries to take it away from behind. He can't do it. Nice pass on a give and go that time. Manas moves to the right side. Sweeping tackle, and back comes Syracuse. That what was, can he ask out of Pascarella? That was an exceptional series of, of ball possession by the BC Eagles. A little Ralph Pascarella went in very hard for that tackle and, and got the ball away nicely. He's had a very good game so far. There's a look at the smallest guy in the field, at least for the Syracuse Orangemen. He's 5'7". He's a junior out of Oceanside, New York. Ralph Pascarella. And he's got a 30-yard throw in with a soccer ball. Out of Standing bounds still. Again. That's amazing. Now we'll try it a little closer to the Syracuse goal. If you get about another 10 yards closer, you can have another repeat of that first goal. Nice move that time for the clear for Boston College. Tough to weave your way through all those defenders. It certainly is. Greg Schrake got stuck on that whole far right side of the field, and instead of opening up the game and sending the ball across the field to number 10, David Sullivan, he kept on continuing on that side, and, and it gets a little bit too tight. Too many players over there. Whistle stops play. You know, Jim, talking about David Sullivan in 1987 as a sophomore, he led the Big East in scoring. He's had a relatively quiet game so far. Mark Fish has done a good job keeping him in check. And they'll let this one go out of bounds, and it'll be Syracuse ball. This is the seventh meeting between Boston College and Syracuse in soccer, and the Orangemen hold a 3-1-2 edge. The series began back in 1982. Last year in Boston College, the teams played to a 2-2 tie. Right now, it's Syracuse 1, Boston College nothing. We're in the first half. Down goes an eagle and a whistle on Syracuse. And it's little Rob Pescarella getting right into the middle of everything. That was Greg Schwake who went flying. Modest will take the kick. There's the wall you see set up. We've got a lot of players up in that 18-yard box. We see only two defenders are back here. Toward the goal they go. Header away by the Orangemen. Elena with it. Tries to make a move on the end line, but it goes out of bounds, and Syracuse has it. Nice play by Nino Gallas. Track, track Kenny and Lane all the way back on defense and flick the ball right off of Kenny and Lane. How important is the goalkeeper in a clearing situation? Well, he's going to be your man up, that extra man that you could use as the attacker, but you really don't want to end up using that goalkeeper as as a safety valve back there because you just never know. If you just miss strike the ball, you're playing on artificial turf. You don't know what kind of a bounce you're going to get even out there. Well, still in play. Now it goes out of bounds. But as a defender, if you get into trouble, you can just knock it right back to him. Pascarella with it on the left wing. Up to his left. 14 is Kevin Reed. They've been doing battle for most of this first half. Kona did a good job turning, but the ball just ran a little bit too quickly for him. After that initial uh, five-minute spurt by the Orangemen, uh, he's been kept in check as well. He has. They found out who they got to keep uh, under control. Morris going for the ball and has it. Pulls up on the dribble. Now he goes forward. He goes out of bounds. A couple nice moves by Steve. Just ran out of room. We are talking a little bit about the man you have to stop early on. How much uh, do these teams know of each other before they get into this game? I'm sure the coaches, along with, their, with the assistant coaches and the, and the staff, do a little bit of a rundown, maybe a little some uh, scouting of the other teams. But you can do all the scouting you want in the world. It all still comes down to that game day, how mentally prepared your team is. Johnson moves in on goal. There's a shot towards the far post and a great save by Renola. 
excellent shot by Kevin Johnson showed a lot of poise and confidence as a freshman just saying hey I'm gonna have it instead of cross and uh, Matt Ranola looked sharp on that one very good save well, they te tease it up and even a better save that was labeled a look at Kevin Johnston he's a freshman from Burlington Ontario On the far wing they go. Face up, face up, face up. Trying to make a move. Schwake has the ball. Surrounded by Orange. Greg has had a lot of possession of that ball. Now Morris has it. Gallitz tries to break. He tries to lead him. Actually, Wright's got a break now. Chris Wright made a super run. The pass by Steve Morris initiated the whole the whole play. If they hurry up with it. Bad play that time, Jim. Unfortunately, you want to move that forward, right? Absolutely. If you're if you're up there on the counter attack, you want to get as many players up front as you possibly can in a very short period of time because that's the whole point of the counter. That was two on three, but Wright had a break and he had Gallage coming into the slot. Syracuse with a missed chance that time. Wright tees it up now, sends it in the middle of the field. Just a missed kick. Manas has had a lot to, to do tonight today, too. This is well. going to be dangerous. Nice clear that time by Renola. Gallich has it. Tries to work his way and drops it back again. This is Morris. Come on, to away. Pass Come to the Come Can't do it. Get it out! Get it out! Syracuse still with the ball. Out! Get it out! Kenny Lane just wanted to clear and get it out, get the pressure off the BC defense. Morris had right going, but uh, he led him too far and didn't get a chance, so it'll be Boston College ball. We have a whistle in the middle of the field there. Steve was caught on the offside. He just ran a little bit too quickly before the ball was served by Raymond Bruce. Otherwise, he would have been in by himself. 14 and a half minutes to go in this first half of a 1-0 game. Syracuse scoring it early. There you get a look at the spacious carrier. Find him white, find him white. Stevie, Stevie. Come on, Kev. Come on, Kev. As we mentioned, both Syracuse and BC play on artificial surface. It would be nice to play outdoors today. Beautiful day, but can't beat the dome. You, you really can. I always enjoyed playing in the carrier dome when it was late October, early November, when it was 10 degrees outside. But a day like today, you got to love it beyond Coin Stadium. There's a header by Syracuse cleared. Johnson tries to get it out. Morris with it now. No, no, no. Where he goes, the man is always on him. There's an interception. There's a bad play by Syracuse. And a chance for the Eagles. There's a shot on goal with a left foot. Not much on it. Turned away easily by Whitcomb. And he saves to get a good job getting it over from his right to his left, but just didn't get enough wood on it. And Chris Wood, Chris Wickham rather, was at the right place at the right time. Nice play that time by Johnson to come up with that ball. Steve Morris. He's something to watch here at Syracuse. A super player. Off the referee, it looks like that's it. Come on, Lee. <laughs> That'll happen once or twice. Ralph, go to ball. Come on, man. It's your man. Now here's Morris trying to move up with it. 18 is Stu Talman. That's a couple minutes have been very sloppy. Neither team being able to control the possession. Here's Schwick again, but he passes behind his man. And they'll come back the other way, taken away this time by Elena. Greg Schwenk had Chris Lagosi wide open, as he does on this case right here, but just a little bit too far in front of him. And Whitcomb comes off to seal it and say, slow down, boys. Let's slow down a bit. Yeah, the past couple minutes, the, the, the game has been very, very sloppy. Neither team being able to control the ball. It is a good opportunity for Chris 
give, give the chance for everybody to regroup, get back in your positions and catch a quick breather. And there's the clear in the middle of the field. And it'll go back to the other goaltender. This is Matt Vanola. Manas tries to make a move now and do something with it. Try to get Boston College going here offensively. They haven't had much. That's a Syracuse call in front of the Syracuse bench. <laughs> I wonder if the linesman made that call or if the bench made that call. <laughs> Mark Fish has some room to work with. Mark Fish was a little bit slow on that and bringing the ball down. He had about 30 yards in front of him. Johnson into the box but cleared nicely by BC. Chris Pace. Here comes Schwick now on the right side. Chased by Lee Davidson. Pace again, taken away by Pascarella. And back to the goaltender. Ralph Pascarella did a good job after being beat by Greg Schwake at midfield, did a very good job getting back on defense and breaking up that last one. And almost another mistake that time by Fish, but he kept it in bounds. Bring it back, bring it back. Johnston down the right side, looking for right. Number 18, Talmadge, will give it back to the goaltender. Here's Manis with it now. 10.40 to go first half. 1-0, Syracuse. To the right side we go. Too far, out of bounds, looking for Kevin Reed. That was a great run. Just a little bit too far in front of him. It appears to me that uh, they may be able to beat Reed Hislop on the left-hand side there. They did it once or twice in the early going, but haven't done it since then. If you're if you're a defender and all of a sudden you get you get your if you're a defender and all of a sudden you're finding yourself taking the attacker out of the ball game, you just keep on going on those run as many as you can because you're going to make them a little bit wary and leery of what you're trying to do in the attack. Come on, Steve, come on. And the ball goes out of bounds, and it'll be Syracuse ball again. Here's Pascarella getting it in quickly. Now we'll hold up. And there's a misplay that time by Johnson. It goes out of bounds. So BC will have it with just under 10 minutes to go in the first half. have had some opportunities but not really inside the box at all they haven't gotten it close they had a couple of corners that went awry and haven't had a really good chance on goal they have had a good a few good opportunities their build-ups have been have looked nice but unfortunately the build-up and opportunity is not what gets you the win there's a sweeping tackle by Dallas as Good I said, you can, play. you can play 89 minutes and uh, set up uh, all sorts of balls, but if you don't put them on goal, you can't put them in the net. That's the whole name of this game. There's a throw in. Goaltender came out to get that one, and it almost cost him, but Boston College couldn't put it in the net again. Raymond Bruce saved Chris Wickham on that play. Chris just mis misjudged the ball because it was a floater of a throw in, and it, and it looked like it skimmed his fingertips, and... Uh, Fortunately, Raymond Bruce had enough composure to go right back into the goal. And appeared he was undecided to go out and get that ball, John. Which is always the biggest problem as a goalie when you do come out. Should I come out? Should I stay? Should I come out? But again, no harm done because they didn't score. BC has the ball, though, on the far side. To the top of the box. Elena with it now. And that's taken away by Morris. Back to the defense. Miles with it. Works left side. Nice move that time by number 12, Chris Lagosi. Still with the ball. 
Andy Sage wears number eight towards the net right on goal. Save made by Whitcomb and they'll come back the other way. Again, nice setup. Had a couple of chances to maybe uh, deke a man here or there and get close to the goal, but Syracuse has it. Absolutely. BC had a very good buildup, knocked the ball around, got as many players to get touches with it. Just that, that final thrust. Couple of headers in the middle there and a whistle against Syracuse. So BC will have it. We've got seven minutes to go in the half. Ready, switch with Ralph. Switch Jim, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're Ed Kelly, you've got seven minutes left to go. You want to start pushing up a little bit. Try to get that equalizer. And if you're the Orangeman, these last five minutes of the first half are very crucial. If you take that lead at the halftime, you're sitting pretty when you come out next half. If, if all of a sudden you get tied in the last five minutes and a half, it's a big confidence booster for the BC Eagles. Here's a chance for Boston College now. They'll have a direct kick right uh, right near the Syracuse box. And the orange will set up the wall. Let's see what BC does with that. And this is a great opportunity if Boston College has got something up their sleeves. There's the wall that the we mentioned. should be very conscious of it. Ray, skip over the wall. They've had short kicks every time they've had a, a chance in this situation, whether it be a corner or a direct kick. That's right. They've had a man run off the ball past the wall to the far side, and they've chipped it to him, and uh, that attacker has flighted across to, to the middle. Let's see what they do this time. Here's a shot Blair. through the wall that time. Right, 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 the orange. Right, so they changed the tactic, Blair. and this time it doesn't work. Blair. And the orange men are going to come up with it. Greg Schweik struck that ball very well and very hard. He got it through the box and or through the wall anyway. With all that power, it should get through. <laughs> and there's a whistle. Down goes the BC Eagle. Schweik has had a tough, tough afternoon. He's been running all over the place, and as you mentioned, a lot of ball control. Absolutely. Kevin Johnston has gotten him a couple times. Ralph Pascarella has pestered him. But right now, you can see the Eagles pushing and fighting to try to get that equalizer uh, before the half. And as far as the Orange are concerned, they've got to keep their concentration. Here's one into the middle. Cleared away. Andy Sage has it. He'll try to send it in the middle. Cleared again by the Orange. 14 is Kevin Reed. He's dunked by Pascarella, and the Boston College Eagles will get another chance. Five minutes to go in the half. Jim, I think the Orange, the, the, the defense, along with everybody else, is basically, is basically just getting a little bit tired and a little bit restless watching other people do, uh, do their job instead of saying, I'm going to take charge and I'm going to get the man. And that's why BC is getting all of these opportunities. You're seeing Syracuse commit an unusual amount of number of fouls for, for only the first half. We've got them so far for 10 fouls compared to BC's one. Schwick lets it go again, but it's deflected and an easy play for Whitcomb to take it up for the Orangemen. That he will do to Morris. So a couple of golden opportunities that time, and BC still scoreless. Well, they had direct opportunities straight on goal. If Boston College is going to get back into this game, they've got to do a better job than just getting up there and just taking a shot straight at the wall. Roy trying to make a move, but he's uh, stopped by Boston College. And here comes Sullivan with it. Scotty Morrell from Syracuse, New York, and transfer for Boston College, where's number 24. Stay near, Kevin. Stay near, Kevin. Sullivan again. Towards the goal. Nice play that time by Morris. Pressure it. Pressure it. Three mark. Three mark. Three mark. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Talmich. Lee, come on. Sage with the ball. To the right side. Hayes tries to make a move. And a whistle. And that's Greg Schrake going down again. This time taken down by Mark Fish. Jim, I'm very surprised to see a lot of the Orangemen just standing around. They've got the 1-0 lead. It's only the first half. We've got to keep up the same intensity. It's much, much too early to say, let's fall back into a defensive zone. Boston College is doing a super job just attacking. There's a center. There's a header. And it's wide. You've got to believe if this attack and this pressure continue, the Orange defense is going to get tired and BC is going to get something.
That did go off Boston College, so the Orangemen will have the ball. Raymond Bruce and Chris Whitcomb back on the back line there. It'll be Bruce to start things off for the Orangemen with under two and a half minutes to go in the first half. A couple of substitutions we'll get as we uh, as we play here in the first half. Jim, one of those substitutions, number 20, Mike Britton out of Rochester, New York, is another one of those good-looking freshmen. He just needs to get some more playing time, and he should develop into a super ball player. Down the right side, will it stay in bounds? No. Boston College with it. Two minutes even to go. First half. Whistle again. That was a foul throw by Ken Elaine. Now there's a mistake you don't want to you don't want to make with two minutes to go in the it half. It certainly is. You've already got burned on a long throw in, in early in the game. And now they'll try it from the other side. And Ralph Pascarell is going to throw it in. You've had the pressure on for the past ten minutes. That's just poor concentration. To the middle he goes. Not far enough, but it's still right there and a nice save. That was a little bit more dangerous than what it actually looked. If you're a goalie, you're backing up into your own net and trying to concentrate on who's going to run into it and who's going to get the ball. It's a tough play. No one did, so Renola had the ball easily. There you see the numbers nearing the end of the first half here at the Carrier Dome. Yeah. And a clear by Renola. And a whistle. And it'll be BC ball. So maybe one final rush, John. Uh, they they have plenty of time, but you if you're if you're the BC right Eagles, you've got to you've got to think that hey, we could get these guys. They've had the better of the play in the last 15, 20 minutes. I think the Orange right now, Jim, look a little bit tired. They look very tentative. That ball just went through Fred Paulson's legs, and it bounced in a six-yard box. As a defender, you can't let you can't let one second go by you where you're not concentrating, Boston, especially that close. Boston College looks a little tired themselves. Otherwise, they may have uh, been there to capitalize on that on that ball. They've had great opportunities. They've had some ex excellent. They've had a number of excellent possessions with the ball. They seem to get up to the Syracuse end very methodically, very nicely. But that last that last pass or that last shot is is what's missing. So we're nearing the end of the first half here between Boston College and Syracuse. Orange give it one last try. That's right on the left side, but it nicely headed away by Chris Pace, who's had a lot of defensive uh, work to try to stop the Orange man. So there you have it. We've played one half at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. The Orange men lead it, one nothing. you're just a short drive away from a full serve facility whether you're just learning the game or perfecting it our professionals make it a truly pleasurable experience under beautiful conditions members can enjoy the spacious new drumlins members lounge and there's the public restaurant open to everybody for your next party consider drumlins banquets and when you've got travel in your plans it's drumlins full service travel agency right at your fingertips drumlins so much more than meets the eye I admit it. I was impressed. And you thought this was going to be a waste of your time. That ADP speaker got me thinking. By turning over my payroll to someone who's faster, more accurate, and less expensive. Be freeing up your key people to do what you hired them to do. Produce. Well, what about a company my size? We're your size. It doesn't matter. Ten or ten thousand employees. ADP handles them all. Sounds like you work for ADP. It comes from experience. Been using them for years. The secret of my success. It's not your success that concerns me. It's mine. You're in early. How was the seminar? Impressive. Very impressive. How so? I've made a decision that will affect both of you. Sounds serious. Listen, we're in business to make a product, right? Right. That's what we do best, right? Mm -hmm. So I brought in ADP to do our payroll so that you two can be more productive. Makes sense. It's a sound business decision. Make one phone call to find out how your company can be more productive. ADP, the way America gets paid. That's it. 
it's over. We have nothing in common. We never agreed on one thing. Ever. Uh, Great. I need to find someone. More like me. When you find something you have so much in common with, something so exciting, so refreshing. Hi. Hi. You just can't stop yourself from grabbing it and holding on to it forever. For the great taste of Pepsi without caffeine, try caffeine-free Pepsi.